few years back we had infrared remote controls and we had RF remotes. A lot of satellite receivers use RF type remote, but there were some that you could actually get a kit and convert your infrared remote to an RF remote. And I had one of those type of receivers and was sent this kit, but never needed it because it was built into the receiver. But I had the, the external receiver sitting in a box. Let's take a look. You better remember these. So this was a remote extender that was sent to people that uh, had Bell or Telus uh, satellite TV or um, or Dish Network. I think this was from my Bell days. Never been used. Never been used. I got a nice little power adapter. I'll keep that. That's always good to have. What's the specs on this? Is it 12 or 5 volts? We'll take a look here and see what it says on it. This is a uh, 9 volt. Oh, cool. 9 volt, 800 milliamp. So that's that's a good one to have because it's an unusual voltage for something that might need 9 volts. I'm going to keep that. The antenna. Yeah, I might keep this too. This might be useful for something. It's tuned to, I think, 433 megahertz. I believe that's where these operated on the UHF band. Um, CD 334 or 433. I think it was 433. Could be wrong. Somebody might correct me on that. What does it say? on here. I don't think it even says, it just says upgrade kit. But um, anyway, what this was for was for people that had receivers that did not have the uh, UHF built in, they used this to convert to uh, infrared. So what it did is it, it received, you, had, you got a remote control that had UHF and those remotes that had UHF typically would not send, they would send a signal out through infrared to control your VCR, or your DVD player, or your TV, but when you're in satellite mode, they send out a signal over UHF. And this would receive that signal. Actually, I think it sent out the TV signals as well. So what you could do is you select it, whether it was a UHF Pro, a black, or a white, because your remote had, when you when you set up your remote, you could pop this tab off the bottom and there was one that was silver and there was one that was black. And what that did was that set the channel that this was on. It had two channels, so you could have two of them and you would select one to either the black tab or the silver tab. And that would select the frequency that it was being used. This would blast the signal out the front and it also had a little eye that you could plug in that you could say stick on the front of your TV or your receiver so that, you know, if, if the, well, it usually was for the TV, so you could control the TV as well from the UHF remote, and then you could walk around the house and change channels. But no, that's not why this was developed. This was designed so that people could have the satellite receiver in a closet or somewhere separate from their system, and it would still control it. And if you had an amplifier or something in that same closet, you could control the volume and stuff from here. I never used it myself. I do, I, I do have an extender for my existing boxes, but they work off infrared and have a little receiving eye that sends it over a cable back to the closet. And my satellite receivers that I had at the time had this built in, so I didn't need to use this for the satellite receiver because the antenna screwed right into the back of it. I had the 9200 receiver, which had the dual tuners, a, se a second output, had a, a, a UHF output that you could feed on cable to a second TV if you want to run it on two TVs. Anyway, this thing I just found sitting in a closet. As you can see, it's never been used because, of course, I never needed it. I thought this might be a cool thing to tear down before I recycle it because I don't have any use for it. Unless one of you guys wants it. If somebody wants this thing, they can have it. I, I won't toss it immediately and I won't destroy this unit. But uh, if somebody wants this thing, if they've got a dish network receiver, like any any dish, bell, or um, Telus branded satellite receivers that only has infrared, this will make it work with UHF. And I do have the remote that goes with it. It's just not here. It's probably sitting in a drawer with the batteries removed because I don't leave batteries and things that aren't being used. But I do have the remote that came with it. I used to use it. I used to use it on my bedroom TV that I could control the receiver that was downstairs and it was feeding up to the bedroom. No, this is long before I built this house. This was the old house. But I had a, it was feeding out on the coax. So this is a piece that never ever got used. And uh, it's just been sitting in the box, in the corner of the closet on the floor. And I was just 
just happened to spot it. I said, oh, what the hell? Why is this thing still here? Let's get rid of it. But before I do that, I'm going to take it apart and show you guys what's in it. And make another video, a teardown video of useless gadgets. And I'm also doing it to annoy a certain person in Florida that just gets his jollies of uh, about complaining about my content. So, and not just me. I see all of his spam. I don't see his messages, right? All of his email messages that he sends, all his spam complaints, do not go to my inbox, but they do go to my spam folder. And every so often I get a kick out of looking in my spam folder to see what's there. Like now, is there anything in spam? Let's see what, if, if, if there's anything in spam. And, uh, oh, I guess nothing right now because I deleted them all. But, guaranteed, there will be today. Florida Metadata is what he calls himself now, or any Hotmail. There, that comes off like that. As you can see, there's four LEDs in here. Actually, you know what? I might just salvage parts out of this thing. If I can figure out how to get it apart. Because uh, it doesn't want to open up very easy. Break it taking it apart. Is there another screw? I can't see a screw on here. But something is holding this piece of crap together. It just... Is there a screw under this label? That would be like them to do that, you know, to put a screw under the label and that's exactly what they did and it's an anti-tamper label too if you pull the label off let's just see what's in here so there it is actually there's more in here than i thought there would be so it's got a couple chips it's got a, 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 a voltage regulator over here probably five volt voltage regulator it's got three crystals and the uh, uhf input couple caps over here brand new never been used four infrared LEDs that might be worth keeping just that just those and some more parts over here more regulators over here and drivers and some good size large wattage chip resistors interesting the angle that they've got the LEDs. So you got one LED that shoots straight out, or actually two LEDs that shoot straight out, and one that shoots over at an angle this way, and one that shoots over at an angle that way. That way, this thing will cover a wide area. If it was placed inside a cabinet, for example, they would nail more than one component in there. But I think maybe that's what I will do, is I will, I'll keep these for sure. These infrared LEDs, these are good to have. I mean, I can get them out of remote controls, but these are going to be quite bright, these ones, for starters. Um, and it could probably even keep the circuitry that drives them, but if I, if I wanted to keep it on a board here. It looks like they're they're running parallel with the uh, this output, too. You see, if we look at, if we get a close-up of how they're wired, you'll see that this lead here comes down, and it goes right to... An LED and to this transistor collector and this side goes through this resistor which is uh, 100 ohms and the other side goes to this I guess it's choke but if we follow the trace it ends up going all the way back around to the other side of an LED this LED and these LEDs that are connected it's the same one here, this resistor for this LED. These these four resistors are the current limiting resistors for the LED. So if, if we follow this through, this side goes through a 100 ohm resistor. We follow it back around and it ends up right there on that side of an LED. Which goes through this resistor and ends up on that side of this LED here. And the other side ends up on this LED, which also ends up on the same side of the other LEDs here. So this is basically just paralleling the LEDs with a 100 ohm resistor. And these other ones here have a 5 point, is it 5.2? You guys can probably see it on camera better than me. 6.2. It's got three 6.2 ohm resistors, a 
200 ohm resistor here, 100 ohm resistor here. Anyway, interesting. Anyway, basically how it works is you've got power coming in. There's just three leads that go from one board to the other. So you're going to have ground and power and the signal. So if you fed an infrared signal into the signal line here, this would blast out from this. This would make a great IR blaster. And one of these three is going to end up, well, it's e it'll be easy to figure out because two of them are going to go to power and one's going to be signal. And it looks like the one in the middle is signal because if we look at the power jack, the power jack connects to an outside pin. This one connects through this coil to this other outside pin. So the one in the middle there, that is going to be the signal line. So if you put a signal into here, this would give you a very strong repeated signal. And there's a close-up look at the actual RF board itself. So there's not really much to see in here. I just figured I would show this thing off and uh, show you guys what we used to use to get wireless on our infrared devices. This was an early attempt for that. I wonder what the difference is on here. The, the, there's different color bands on these LEDs which makes me think they're probably different wavelengths so that it can control different devices I don't think I don't think any of these are well one might be a visible LED for that matter let's just apply a voltage here and see maybe one of them flashes red I'm going to put a couple of volts across these LEDs and just see whether any of them light up a colored LED because we may have one LED that's colored and the other's infrared ground this one. Ah! One of these is red. <laughs> okay, it's got a red LED. I don't know how that shows up on camera, but that one's a red one. And these others must all be uh, infrared. You see they're all connected together in uh, in parallel with each other. If we connect it to this side of the resistor you'll see that it, it lights up and they all should be lighting up. If I turn on the night shot on the camera we should see light coming out of all of them. Which we do. I don't see anything coming out of these other ones. I wonder why. I mean, clearly they are in parallel. If I do the short the other side, what happens? Hmm. I mean, we should see light out of all of them. Oh, now we do. Oh, you know what? I bet you it's, it's fed from the other circuit. That's why. That one lights up there. Infrared. And this one lights up here. Infrared. And this one here lights up over here. Infrared, but it, it also turns on the red LED at the same time. You see? So, looking at these two, they're driven from different transistors that drive the LEDs. These two are driven off of one transistor and these two are driven off of the other transistor. These three are infrared and this is visible light. But what's interesting is that that one has a red stripe on it and the other two have a black stripe. Anybody know what that means? I'm 
going to go out on a limb and suggest that this is probably a different infrared wavelength than these ones. That way it can control other devices that operate on a different frequency band. That's what I kind of think probably is, is that these are different wavelengths. And this one here is, uh, is red. And if we look at the internal structure, you'll see that this one has a different internal structure. You see, they're all, they're, they're, they're actually, these two have got black stripes on them, but they look different inside. But anyway, this one here, you can tell the difference. And if we look down the lens, it looks different than these other ones. It has a a larger reflector behind it because it's visible. Anyway, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I can show you on this. Um, I say, I'm going to throw it back together. If anybody is watching and they, they think they might have a use for this thing and you'd like it, then uh, certainly do uh, let me know and uh, you can have it because I have no use for it so for me um, it's either going to go in the garbage or um, I'm going to uh, gut it for what parts are useful in that case the LEDs it interesting that they actually put a tamper proof sticker on here so when you pull the sticker off it rips it so you can't put the sticker back on again that's that's a little trick that some of the manufacturers used to do it was more common on uh, pre-recorded tapes that went to the movie stores the rental tapes because what people would do is they would make a copy of the tape and then they would open up the shell and change the spools inside and keep the original tape and send back the copy. I know people that used to do it. And how I know people that used to do it. I shouldn't say I know people. I know of people that used to do it because the shop that, uh, that I worked at, for a few years anyway, we got out of the movie rental business, but we rented movies. We rented movies on beta and on VHS, and uh, people would actually do that. And our rentals were so, at the point, this was before everybody had computers, so you could keep track of who had what. We used to just write down on a little, like a, one of those little like a card, like, you know, like a recipe card that you kept in like a, like a Rolodex. We used to have a little card, and we kept it with the movie put the box out and someone brought the box to the counter and we'd go and get the movie out of the box and we'd open it up and we'd write down the customer's name on a little card and stick it back in and, and put that in the empty box and then rent them the movie and when the movie came back we would put the card back in the movie and it only held so much information and you're not checking every tape it wasn't until someone said oh the quality of this was bad and then we could go and look and see who had it but when you started seeing movies coming back and the same name kept coming up who had it prior especially if some especially if the next customer complained uh, we figured out who it was and uh, stopped renting to him anyway thanks for watching this thing I'll go back in its box here and see if somebody wants it let me know quick otherwise this thing's going out thanks for watching